December 25th James was thoroughly enjoying the Christmas party with his office mates Everybody was letting go all the stress and tiredness with every trip Just then one of his friend Jagyas comes to him Merry Christmas James Merry Christmas Have a drink with me I think I have already drank too much James, the party has just started now. Have one more drink. No, Jagyas. Sam and Mary are waiting for me. I have to leave for home now. Uh, one drink with me, uh, please, please. Jagyas doesn't stop even after saying no, and he forcibly makes him drink whiskey. Just then, James' mobile rang, and he somehow stops Jagyas. After seeing the phone. James gets to know that his son Sam is calling him. Hello, son. From how long we are waiting for you, and you haven't forgotten my Christmas present, right? Dear Sam, your dad doesn't forget anything. I'm just leaving from here. James, where are you? Since how long Sam is waiting for you? At least for today, come home on time. Mary, you just manage for some time. I'm just leaving from here. James you have always the same excuse at least celebrate christmas with your family James adjusts his tie and hair he gives a strange smile and drinks the glass of wine kept there in just one sip and leaves without saying anything to anyone without wasting time James immediately leaves for home and just then he notices a bottle of water lying there It can be dangerous to drive in this condition. James takes out bottle of water and then he pours it over his head and splashes it on his face and try to counteract the effect of alcohol and leaves the next minute. Hey Jesus Christ, I'll reach home by 9 o'clock if I get such an empty road and if today I got late, it will be very difficult to convince Sam about it. James turns on the radio and starts searching for a radio frequency. but he gets shocked to know that radio isn't catching any frequency it's strange it has never happened before why is the radio not connecting to any channel james constantly tries to connect to the channel by turning the radio dial but he doesn't hear anything except disturbance just then he sees the road in front where the police are taking everyone's alcohol test oh no Don't tell me they are taking an alcohol test. If they stop me today, then I will definitely get caught. Oh no. Now what should I say to them? Hello Mary? Yes, I- I'm on the way, but I'm stuck in traffic. James? <laughs> At least for today be on your words. It's already 8:30 and you haven't reached home yet. Mary, just don't stress little things. I'm coming home soon. James, I'm listening to these excuses from the last 10 years. Saying this, Mary angrily hangs up the phone, and James says in tension, looking at the queue of vehicles. I should be looking for a shortcut. James opens navigation on his mobile, and without wasting any time, takes a U-turn and heads towards the new route. James, following the navigation, descends on a narrow path. surrounded by a dense forest on both sides on his way in the deserted road james is shocked to see that his radio starts playing all of a sudden oh my goodness now from where the hell this radio got the network anyway at least there will be some entertainment on this deserted road as james starts raising the volume of the radio disturbances start coming in the network again before james could do anything He hears the voice of a man from the radio asking for help. Uh, is there someone? Can someone hear me? I'm speaking from Carl Vance on 9 FM. Please, please help me. 
Help me quickly! What's going on now? Is some radio jockey doing Christmas pranks? Hearing this, James keeps driving according to the navigation by turning off the volume of the radio. Gradually, James realizes that the light is getting dim. Suddenly, James' phone also goes off and James stops at a crossroad. Oh shit, man! Now, how will I know the way ahead? While running out of time and in the tension of reaching home on time, James trusts his lux and turns the car to the left. Then suddenly, the same sound comes from the radio again. Hey, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. <laughs> Can someone hear me? I'm speaking from Carl 109 FM. Please help me. Help me quickly! I don't know what is happening here. Is there something wrong? Anyway, at this time, it is more important for me to reach home. Jim continues to drive his car on the rough road when he notices a large rusty gate on his left side. On which he finds a crooked board of Carl 109 radio station was hung. This is the same station from where that voice for help was coming again and again. It must be RJ's Christmas prank. I must leave. James ignores the station and proceeds hurriedly when his car abruptly stops with a jolt. James panicked and got out of the car and hurriedly opened the hot bonnet with his hand and a huge steam of hot smoke spreads all around. <coughs> Shit! Not again! I can't believe it! There is no mechanic or even a phone! James, whatever you do, it always ends with a mess! James looks around in search of help, but he sees nothing but a forest and an empty road. Just then... Yes! There was a radio station behind there, and there must be a phone, but should I go there? Without wasting any time, James walks towards the station. Just then, he felt a strange movement from the bushes around him. What was that? James, where the hell are you stuck? In such a place, I should keep something with me for safety. Seeing the condition of this radio station, it doesn't seem that there will be any visitors or staff here. James standing in confusion was lost somewhere. He didn't understand whether he should go inside or not. Just then, he again felt some movement in the bushes and he turned back and shouted. Who is it? This car means there must be someone inside. I should immediately call the mechanic for help. James starts getting more anxious when he hears the sound of jingle bell coming from the recording room. Hey, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Surely there is someone inside. Definitely I am going to get some help there. Hello? Someone there? I want to make a call. James is shocked as he enters the recording studio calling for help. But he gets stunned seeing the inside view. No one was there. And the radio was operating on its own. What's wrong with this place? There is no one here. So, how this machine is operating on its own? Thank God there is a phone. James, without thinking of anything else, goes straight to the phone. And as he picks up the receiver and keeps it on his ear, 
James hears the sound of jingle bell song from the phone. James repeatedly says hello, but the song is continuously playing from the other side. Before James can understand anything, he realizes that someone has grabbed his leg from below. And as soon as he looks down, he gets stunned. Who are you? Leave me! <laughs> Please help me! Seeing the blood pouring out of his mouth, James jolts down to free himself. He was terrified on seeing the blood splattering on his clothes. <laughs> Who are you? And what the hell is happening? <laughs> Help me! Get me out of here, please! <laughs> Get you out of here? But who are you? And how did all this happen? I I just wanted to celebrate Christmas with my family. But I don't know where it came from. My eight years old son, Sam is <laughs> waiting for me at home. And I'm tied here with this pillar. <laughs> James gets shaken hearing all this. As soon as he hears Sam's name, his mind goes out of control. Your son's name is Sam? James gets furious and tries to know the truth from him by grabbing the blood-drenched Christopher by his collar. Look, whoever you are, I will not tolerate such a lousy joke anymore. <laughs> Do you think all this is a joke? You think this blood is fake? And and this? He lifts his shirt and shows a deep wound on the side of his waist, as if a ferocious beast had pricked him. James lost all his senses. He couldn't understand what was real and what was fake. What is happening with me? I really can't figure out what is real and what is fake. You, you have to leave from here or else he'll kill you too. Who's going to kill me? What the hell is going on? Confused James loses his cool and madly tries repeated attempts to make a call from that landline phone lying there. Christopher laughs and says in pain. <laughs> this phone, this radio is all a dummy. <coughs> Nothing will work. What do you think? I have not tried. Who tied you up here? <laughs> I don't know what exactly that thing is. <sighs> but yes, neither it is a human nor an animal. Who are you talking about? Who is he? They both were talking. Just then, a voice of a crying infant started coming from the corner of the studio. From where the hell this crying child's voice is coming? Tell me, what are you hiding from me? You get out of here as soon as possible! James didn't believe what Christopher was saying. James starts searching here and there. Seeing that, Christopher started shouting loudly. Don't open this room! <laughs> are you listening to me? Just don't open this door! James can't tolerate that baby's crying voices anymore and starts removing the things in front of the door with all his power. Seeing this, the injured Christopher gets mad. Don't you understand? I said, don't open that door! Christopher takes his hand out of the noose with all his power and attacks James. Oh God, what have I done? James starts grouping the whole room, but he doesn't find the child anywhere. Only then, the iron Almira lying in the corner starts shaking. Hey, what is this? He realizes that the cracks on the box suddenly start filling with bright green color and James loses his senses and starts getting attracted towards it. How amazing it is! Seeing such a gift 
Sam will be very happy and will no longer be upset. Without thinking anything, James takes that box outside and starts searching Christopher's pocket. James pulls the key out of the blood-soaked pocket and exits the radio station with the box. It seems like James' mind is controlled by someone else. He breaks all the signals and reaches his home, where Sam and Mary are waiting for him. James enters the house lamely and calls Sam, holding the box in his hands, which was covered in blood. Sam! <laughs> Sam! <laughs> as soon as James enters the house, he gets stunned on seeing the clock hanging on the wall, which was showing 9 p.m. How is that possible? How can it be just 9 p.m.? Before James can figure it out, Sam and Mary come running seeing James covered in blood. James? What happened? Are you alright? Huh? Dad? Why is there so much blood in your clothes? James starts laughing like a maniac in confusion. He doesn't understand anything. And that's when Sam's eyes fall on that mysterious box which was in James' hands. What's this, Dad? Merry Christmas, Sam! As soon as he said this, the lights of the house started fluctuating and the TV automatically turned on and the jingle bell started playing on the screen in the same radio voice. Everyone gets nervous seeing this and suddenly the box opens automatically. Merry Christmas! <laughs> and a two feet long scary monster come out of it and attacks the whole family and eats the whole family. If you enjoyed this video, do like, share and comment. And to be the first person to watch our videos, make sure to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for timely notifications.